you've spoken extensively about the various distortions in our electoral process, uh, the vote buying and freebie culture. So do you think adopting a mixed uh, proportional representation system like in Germany would help us overcome these distortions? No, I'm not in favor of mixed proportional representation. What Germany has is what is called mixed compensatory proportional representation, MCPR. It is mixed because half the seats are chosen like they are chosen in India and uh, Britain. There are constituencies and uh, people elect uh, whomever they like and first pass the post. It is proportional because the rest of the half are arranged in a manner that the overall total composition, including those who are elected in the territorial constituencies, the total composition is in proportion to the votes. Supposing party A gets, is entitled to 100 votes according to the ratio of votes it gets, 100 seats. Supposing party A got 60 seats elected locally in the territorial constituencies, they will get 40 more, therefore the 100 is filled. Supposing party B also is entitled to 100 seats, but they got only 40 of their members selected locally. They get 60 seats now. So the total number depends on the proportion of votes they get. Now that will work for Germany well. It will not work for India at all because one of the key reasons why should we switch over is not the reason to be proportional. The key reason is in the constituency based election that we have the first past the post system because only two parties matter. One of the two will emerge as a winner. There is a tremendous temptation to use all means fair or foul particularly in a poor and, and uh, largely illiterate country without any personal experience or running a democracy for their collective good. There is a temptation to somehow get the vote. That is how vote buying became endemic. The kind of money spent in Indian elections is phenomenal, unprecedented in the world. Nowhere in the world do you see this kind of money. And most of this expenditure is illegitimate and for vote buying and distribution of some goodies, some gifts to the voters to entice them to vote for you. And the MLAs, primarily MLAs to some extent MPs, they are desperate to win and therefore the hunger for position to be an MLA, to be recognized as a person of power and influence in society, there is so much of lust for position and power in India, so much of insecurity in our personal lives that without that position and power we think in our own minds we are irrelevant. They are willing to spend exorbitant sums. It's become a reckless horse race or gambling. Now, in a proportionality model, if you actually choose the list of candidates according to the ratio of the votes, you don't have that incentive to spend money to get what one extra vote in that territory. The moment you have a mixed system like in Germany, if some people, half the people elected in the territorial constituencies as today, the incentive continues to be the same as today because that fellow, irrespective of what happens to party, somehow wants to get more votes. They'll, already we have a practice in India, we know what to do to win elections. That will continue unchecked. And instead of the party becoming the focus of voting, the party will focus on the candidates will somehow gather more vote which will be also transferred to the party because in India it's unlikely that I vote for a candidate in one way and a party in another way. It doesn't happen like that. It requires much higher degree of understanding. If you see our elections, that's why this whole simultaneous elections also is problematic because people have not shown any, any understanding that a parliamentary election is different from a state election, is different from a local election. They tend to vote uniformly, 90% of people vote uniformly across the board on the basis of their preference for or against the state government. Because in their mind, state government is the unit. That's something they have understood over the years, for whatever reason. And if you are happy with the state government and that leader of the state government, you tend to vote for that party in all the three tiers. If you are not happy, you tend to vote against that party in all the three tiers. Now, that means there is no democratic maturity yet. We have democracy, yes. But the electorate has not given to, uh, the understanding of the link between the vote and consequences. What happens to my life? In such a situation, if you allow the, the field election of a candidate to determine the party's outcome, 
then the election system is not changed at all. So that's not at all a wise thing. We must have, if you go for proportional representation, let there be a full proportional representation. You vote for a party and intending people can come together. If you can't even come together as a political party with common ideas, if each one wants to be an independent king, then that's not the way you're supposed to run politics because in politics you have to come together to run the government, right? We're not electing local kings. We're electing a group of people to work together to form a government, to shape policies, to make laws, and to approve the budgets. No single individual can do. So if I say, no, I alone, then that's not fit, particularly in a proportional system model where more than two parties become viable. Therefore, there is no argument, rational argument to say that, no, what about independence? In any case, independence don't matter even today. 99.7% of independents in India lose deposits, not getting, not losing election. So most, the, the few independents that are elected in India are generally party rebels who are denied a seat by the party leadership because we don't have a democratic method of choosing candidates. Therefore, they stand as independent candidates because they already have name recognition and some money and local clout. Some of them get elected. They promptly join one party or the other after the election. That's the way it happens in India. Therefore, that's another thing. The candidature. If party is going to be the central issue about the candidates, then the way the candidates are selected cannot be left to the whims of a party leader. There has to be a, a democratic process institutionalized so that elected representatives of the party at the local level, they choose the candidates. We can go into technical details, but with these safeguards, and of course there must be some reasonable threshold. For instance, uh, Germany has a 5% threshold. If you don't get 5% vote, you're not entitled to representation in the proportional vote. In India, 5% for the national is too high a threshold. But 5 or 10% in a state is a reasonable threshold. For most of the major states, that's a reasonable threshold. The parties can come together and agree on what is a reasonable threshold, 5% or 10% in a major state. And the advantage is that maverick people or maverick parties, which have very harebrained ideas, may get this half percent, one percent support, they will not be able to enter parliament because that's also disruptive. You must have some reasonable public support and reasonable sensible ideas, not esoteric and dangerous ideas which are irrelevant to the country. Uh, you don't, you can't afford madmen govern in the country. And finally, I personally believe that the proportional model, the way it's working in Germany, it encourages parties' collaboration and cooperation, and uh, government formation and stability are going to be very much there. But because we're used to one party governing most of the time, we can also look at a model where the party that has the highest number of votes gets some extra bonus seats, let's say 10% more seats, so that it also becomes disproportionate. So while the, the whole election is based on proportionality, therefore all the benefits of proportionality are there, if the party, leading party gets some more seats, that means there's a greater chance of that party becoming the pole around which the government is formed. Oftentimes they may get actually enough votes to become the governing party without uh, any coalition also. So these are things we can consider depending on the requirements. But fundamentally, shift it from a candidate getting elected with a, in a, in a winner take all system to the proportion of vote determining the composition of legislature and the party's fortunes that will completely reshape the way we think of things. And the political discourse, political practices, and the political culture will undergo a transformation. Thank you, sir, so much for taking out the time to speak with us. It's been extremely informative, and yes, My thank pleasure. you.